can I help you? You must come with me. Well, I just got back, actually. I don't even know if this is my house or what. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 that hurt. What was that blue stuff? We don't have much time. Yeah, you could have killed me at home. Just saved the trip. Yeah, take this. What am I doing here? Your job. Take these. Back to the future in Terminator 2. Well, you want me to compare these? You must review these. Now. You have a lot of those. I will stand watch. Okay, so I'm, I'm watching. Do you want like a full analysis or. I'll just wing it. <sighs> yeah, just like I remember. Two very rewarding and classic experiences, though with two radically different tones. Back to the Future offers a look into the life of Marty McFly, a kid in 1985 who befriends a wacky scientist who succeeds in inventing a time machine. Through a series of unfortunate events, Marty finds himself stranded in the past, trying to fix a future he unintentionally broke. In Terminator 2, we see the life of young John Connor, leading the future resistance, threatened by a time traveler who came back to end his life and break the timeline. Oh, that's a weird coincidence. Anyway. Using the machines sent back from the future, John is able to course correct the events of the present to stop Judgment Day from occurring, whereas over in Back to the Future, the machine's mere existence is the cause of all the problems. Yeah, wait, that, that's not quite right. Marty actually does end up fixing the future too. See, his parents are a bit of a mess. What was it, George? Bird watching? What, Lori? What? Anyway, your grandpa hit him with the car and brought him into the house. He seems so helpless. Like a little lost puppy. And my heart just went out to him. And it was then that I realized that I was going to spend the rest of my life with him. <laughs> Their lives are not all they hoped for, and no one seems present in the realities they've chosen for themselves. Before Marty's trip back to 1955, reruns over family dinner where they're not really paying attention to each other, just kind of in their own little worlds. That's the norm for the McFly family. And doesn't seem like it's something anyone's really going to be happy with. His initial stakes are pretty clear. Get his parents back together before he himself is wiped from the timeline. However, the way he has to change their interactions to make them end up together gives both of his parents a new perspective, not only for each other, but on life in general. So while it's not the end of the world, these events reshape the course of Marty's life while increasing the happiness and success of his whole family. How does this relate to Terminator 2? Let me explain what Judgment Day is. The worry of two generations. Nuclear Armageddon combined with the growing concern that our technology will destroy us. John Connor, all grown up, is the leader of the human resistance, the only faction standing in the way of Skynet's total domination. The AI creates a time machine to send back a robotic assassin to kill him. The resistance, in response, sends its own machine back. What it leads to is an awesome action movie that posits social questions along the way while making the audience suspend its disbelief. You know, for how many people regard these as timeless films, the time travel element really doesn't make any sense. Skynet created this time machine, why not send back an army? This isn't even the first time they've sent back a machine to assassinate John Connor. You'd think they'd send more than one. And with Marty McFly, how would the recombined parents have, you know, the same kids? You'd think they would have the exact same interactions to create that? I mean, it doesn't matter. You know why? The story told is the important part. Marty McFly, a well-meaning loser from a family of them, is thrust into a situation way over his head, but despite his teenage status, he navigates the path to the best answer for the world and his family. He overcomes seemingly impossible odds to give the world a better path. John Connor, also a canon teenager, finds himself thrust into the role of eventual savior, something way too big for a kid to handle. What he does with that information is take the necessary actions to make sure that the future is secured despite Skynet's best efforts to upend the outcome. They're both stories of hope in a hopeless situation, about blazing a trail to benefit both the changers and the changed. While the time travel devices are kind of flimsy, they're just plot devices, 
to tell the story of bettering the whole world despite what seemed to be insurmountable odds trying to stop you. Huh. That worked out a lot better than I thought. But uh, after two in a row, I really gotta go to the bathroom. Stop there. Well, all right, I'd rather I pee on the floor than in your bathroom. You don't. Ah! 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 How did a nerf dart do that? Zombie strike. Huh. At least I don't have to pee anymore. Then your review continues. Goonies and Beetlejuice. Okay, now you're just being crazy. How am I supposed to compare these two? You don't have to compare. Just take them as they are. So you're not a cybernetic organism? Oh no. I'm just a fan. Hmm. Okay. I'll give it a try. Let's start with The Goonies, a film from 1985 that follows a group of friends in crisis. Their beloved little town is going to be taken by a company, and we see them on their last day together before everyone's forced to move out. The only thing that would help them out of their situation is if they came across a ton of unexpected wealth to outbid the company and keep their estates. But that would take a miracle. You know, like a literal treasure hunt through the substructure of the old town to find lost pirate booty. What are the odds of that? Copper bones. Westward foams. Triple stones. Triple stones. This must be copper bones. Wow. Look at that! What? Triple stones! Stones? We got you now when I really was coming up right behind you. Full disclosure, I actually didn't see this one when I was a kid. It wasn't on the channels that I watched and my parents never owned it, so I missed this one. What a fun trip to watch. From the realistic banter of the main group of kids to the outlandish cartoon baddies, this escalating adventure shows how a gaggle of outcasts find acceptance within their group and eventually society at large despite how out of the norm they first appear. The kids call themselves the Goonies, embracing that clear slam from other kids. The search for one-eyed Willie's hidden loot leads them down a tricky path. These dangerous circumstances, which have actually killed other characters in the film, add a realistic element of danger despite how campy or cartoonish the villains first appear. Hey, it's showtime. Yep, there might be more to compare here than I first thought. You see, Beetlejuice is about a young girl who befriends some ghosts in the attic, the original owners of the home. Despite their misgivings about the living, they communicate with Lydia and grow to accept her as she's accepted them. This may seem unconventional, but there's a good reason for that. Well, I read through that handbook for the recently deceased. It says, live people ignore the strange and unusual. I myself am strange and unusual. She instantly became an icon for goth kids everywhere. You can still buy her merch in Hot Topic to this day. We also have the titular bad guy, Beetlejuice. This self-proclaimed ghost with the most is absolutely the reason this film caught on with kids. They've made a full-on animated series based on him. His hilarious but bizarre antics create real crisis for everyone in the plot. He's a selfish but lovable monster who is dispatched in the climax in a fitting and comical way. In the end, the whole family accepts the ghost couple and Lydia for who they are. So these are both films about acceptance within a cohort group and persevering against the powers that be that are greater than them and kids way too young solving their parents' problems. How did I not see this before? While their circumstances are at first glance fields apart, the Goonies and Beetlejuice both pursue separate childhood fantasies, finding buried treasure with your friends and thinking that the sounds in the attic are ghosts. It makes them the heroes while their parents play the fools, needing guidance from their kids to actually resolve the situation. Wow, that lesson actually applies to Terminator 2 and Back to the Future. Holy crap! While those parents had more agency in the films, especially Sarah Connor, they too would have gone down the wrong path to solving their issues if not for the assistance from their offspring. It's just bizarre that I didn't see this before, but these wildly different not-made-for-children movies all have great messages for those young ones that do witness them. I can personally attest that this is the case for three out of the four. Wow. This movie's really left a mark on me. Not only now, but when I was a kid. The fact that you can watch most of these either on a streaming service or find them in a $5 bin at Walmart is actually great. While they're not great films for kids to watch alone, I wouldn't be who I am today if I didn't watch them with my parents. 
I came here to shed light on a subject that falls to the wayside during troubled times. What these movies mean to me was I can escape the everyday stresses of life. I mean, I can sit down and actually enjoy myself for an hour and a half to three hours at a time. And on top of that, I can even teach my children the movies I grew up with and what lessons that they taught me when I was their age. These movies taught me never to give up and to never let the darkness in me take control of me. They taught me to believe in myself, to believe in others, to believe that I could fly. They taught me life lessons that sometimes a parent could never explain or even teach to their own children. These movies taught me who was the hero and who was the villain. They taught me sometimes the good thing to do wasn't always the right thing to do. Now with watching these movies again with my children as they grow up, we have a stronger connection as a family. Oh, you have a family? Oh, here they come now. Power patrols. That's my girls. You did this for them. No, you did it. But you're not done here. Wow. I haven't thought of this movie since I was a kid. The futures depend on you explaining why this movie means so much to us. Greatest fear of two generations combined. A cat and a couch. Then your review continues. The story told is the important part. I'm keeping this one. This is the final take. You did your best, but I am unflappable. I'm unflappable.